All right, welcome back again. So time for our last uh, topic about the pick. Uh, we're going to talk about communication. This is kind of my favorite topic, so it's kind of fun that it's last. So we're going to be talking specifically about UART communication. Uh, that stands for Universal Asynchronous Receive Transmit. Uh, that's the way that we're going to be working with our communications in lab. Before we get into that, though, let's kind of back up uh, and just talk big picture. There are a lot of communication protocols. I mean, you've probably heard of you know things like Wi-Fi and USB, of course, but there are a ton more. Uh, when it comes to PICs, though, and like most microcontrollers, they start lower level. There are really only three that most microcontrollers can do. Um, so they can do SPI, uh, I squared C, and then UART. If you wanted to do something like, you know, Wi-Fi, typically you would talk like to a Wi-Fi chip and then it would convert it and then it would talk via Wi-Fi, same with Bluetooth. Um, typically microcontrollers, they focus on these three. That's not a rule, that's just kind of the three that have become the most popular. I'll mention the first two briefly, but the third one's the one we're really after. So the first one I'll mention is SPI. SPI is a very, very simple communication protocol where you exchange a byte uh, with another microcontroller. The reason we're not doing this one is because computers don't support SPI. So it's really fast and really efficient. If I had two microcontrollers, I would probably use SPI, um, but we're not going to use it because it can't talk to a computer. So that's all I'll say about that one. I squared C is really nice if you want a bunch of things on a bus. So if you need like 10 things that all need to talk, I squared C is kind of the way to go. Again, it doesn't work out as well for what we're doing in the lab, so I'm just going to mention I squared C and move on. The one we are going to use that we'll actually spend a lot of time talking about is UART. Uh, UART is also just called serial communication just because it, it's the like most popular way. All of these are serial communications, but UART is like so popular it gets the name serial communication. So what it does is it's really intended to have uh, two devices, right? So you have um, typically two connected, and they have uh, receive on one side and a transmit on the other side, and they're very simple. They actually have 10 bits. They have a start bit, a stop bit, and then eight bits of data. So if you want to send more than eight bits, uh, you have to do it in multiple messages. Um, really simple, really popular uh, mechanism for communication. The uh, <clears throat> computer has a TX line. It's going to go to the, uh, the microcontroller. The microcontroller has its TX line. It's going to go to the computer so they can talk at the same time without any collisions at all. So here you can see that there's a couple messages being sent. Um, so here's like a message that comes across from the computer and then another message. Uh, and then here's a message that comes back from the microcontroller. The way this used to work uh, for years and years and years is computers had serial ports. So you probably can't find a computer that still has a serial port. Uh, but they had these little DB9 serial ports. Comically, these things, really only three pins were actively used like throughout the entire life of it. Receive, transmit, and you also have to have a ground, so three pins. The others on there I could talk about, but you don't really need to know. Um, people use serial cables. We've still got like a box of like 100 old serial cables. Um, but that's not really how people do things before. Uh, this uh, was actually called RS-232 communication. These days, nobody's got a serial port. Uh, so pretty much we still use serial communication, but we do it via another chip. So the microcontroller will talk to um, a chip like this. This is an FTDI driver chip. There are a lot of variations, but the actual chip on top here, it's what's called an FTDI driver. And then what it does is it takes your UART communication uh, from, your, from your microcontroller and actually uses USB on the other end. And what your computer does is it creates a virtual COM port. So it'll give you like COM and then it'll give you like some number, right? So let's say it gives you COM5 um, all the way up to as many of these things as you have. You might get a COM20 if you use enough of them. Used to, you always had, it was on COM1 all the time. Uh, but these virtual COM ports, the number uh, will continue to grow. And we'll talk about that in the lab. So virtual COM ports is how we do communication with microcontrollers. Another thing we can do, which is kind of cool, is you could do it like the last picture where it was wired. Uh, but you can also use chips like these. Uh, this is a little uh, XB. 
if you have one of these on both sides, uh, what happens is, is if I talk to this XB, um, it'll automatically transmit it to this XB, um, and then it'll send it to the computer just like normal, right? So it's a really convenient way to, to break free of the wires. And we'll do this in lab, um, and I'll do a little demo today. Uh, but this is what an uh, XB uh, is all about. It's to do wireless UART communication. All right, enough chatter. Uh, let's do a quick example. Uh, so let's go ahead and I just want to do a send. Uh, I want to send the number uh, 48, uh, which is the ASCII character 0. So let's go ahead and fire up MPLab. So, you know, same steps as always. Uh, create a new project. Oh, I discovered that you can actually just select recently used and it'll auto populate the 18F4520. I should have found that like five weeks ago. Um, so then I'll select my, uh, I've got my, um, my pit kit 3 in here. And I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, UART lecture. Great. So what I want to do with this guy is I want to go ahead and start with templates with interrupts. Uh, and I'll just call it uh, UART lecture. I'm not going to use interrupts in this video lecture, but I will later. So I want to go ahead and get that set up. So the first thing you need to do to, to use the UART is you need to include a header file. Um, it's actually, the header file is called USART. It's because it can be used for synchronous or asynchronous. Um, we're only going to use asynchronous. Um, and so now this, this file is basically set up. I'm not going to use any analog, so I'm just going to go ahead and say add con uh, 1 uh, equals 0x. 0F. I could have left that alone. And then before I forget, um, Tris has to have a change. Uh, I'll cover this here in a second. So um, Rx uh, needs to be an input. So go ahead and make that change real quick. Uh, so it needs to say Rx, uh, which by the way is RC7, needs to be an input. I'm just going to do it in hex. Uh, 8 is just 100, zero, zero, so that's RC7. Let's go catch the notes up a little bit. So, in order to do UART communication, you have to know just where it magically pops out. Uh, UART communication on our microcontroller uh, comes out where uh, information comes into the RX line on RC7, um, and then information comes out of the microcontroller. Uh, with RC6, uh, which is your TX line. And just like with uh, with other things we've done, that's just where it comes out, right? So you just have to know that's where it pops out at. The library for doing UART communication is quite uh, complex. Uh, there's a ton of functions, which is comical because we're going to only use one. <laughs> um, we're going to only use open which is kind of crazy that it has all these, these things. Uh, the library functions, I could talk about why I don't like them, uh, but they're what's called not blocking, which means they're a pain to use. Um, so we're not going to use them. We're going to only use uh, open usart, and that's going to be our only library function. So that's kind of easy. Open usart has a lot of different commands you can send it. Um, it's got choices, just like any library function. Um, it's got things like, do you want interrupts uh, for receiver transmit? For this video lecture, we'll say off uh, and off. Later, we'll change the RX one to on. We'll never use a TX. And then there's some basic setup. Um, so we want asynchronous mode. We want 8 bits, of course. Uh, we want continuous, and we want the high baud rate. And then we'll talk about this number later, right? So this, this has to do with timing. We'll push that to another video lecture. So we actually want to type uh, this bit of code. Uh, so you can pause the video lecture and you can go type it. I'll go type mine now. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in this area with, with interrupts, even though there is no interrupt yet. Um, it'll be nice just to have it right here. And you can actually type these by just like typing the word USART and then hitting um, control space to autocomplete. All right, so I think I've got mine typed here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different things in there. It looks great. Um, so I think I'm all set. 
The other thing is, since I'm not using interrupts yet, I'm going to go ahead and turn them off for now. Inevitably, I'm going to forget that I turned them off, um, and I'll, <laughs> I'll regret that, but I'll go ahead and turn them off for now. Uh, and then what we want to do is we've, we've set up the UART. It's going to talk at some baud rate, which we'll talk about the baud rate stuff later. Um, and all I want to do is I just want to, if I push um, if uh, port b bits dot rb0 is pressed, um, I could be lazy and just hard code 0 because I know 0 is pressed. If it's pressed, then I want to send a message out. The way you send messages out is kind of simple, uh, which is nice. Um, you just call printf, which is cool. If you'd like to send a single byte, uh, what you need to do is you need to say percent %c. So this is the way we send a single byte. There were all those library functions. We're not going to use them. Uh, we're going to do this approach where we want to say percent %c, uh, and this is how we send a single byte. Uh, and then I said I want to send this byte. I suppose I had to go define this thing. I'm just going to hard code this right now uh, to be the ASCII symbol 0. And this is a char. All right, so I think I'm ready to give this guy a whirl. Uh, so I go ahead and run this guy. The problem with UART communication is you really need somebody to receive it to see what's happening. I hate that error message. Um, but what we're going to do here is we've actually got a light uh, on RC7. And so we can see that when you press it, it'll actually go a little bit dimmer. Uh, so that would be kind of neat. You should also have a wire uh, in your kit. Uh, and with this wire, we're going to do some fun stuff. So if I press uh, RB0, um, the light gets a little dimmer. I'm not sure if the camera is able to pick it up. But when I press it, uh, it actually does get a little dimmer. Oh, I just realized, I think I actually said I was going to use RA4, though. That's fine. I'll switch this to RA4. I wanted to use RA4 just so you knew it existed. Uh, RA4 is pressing down on the joystick. Uh, so that's where RA4 is. So as soon as it fires up, uh, a UR is in the idle state. And then when you press the button, it gets just a little dimmer. Another thing we're going to do in the next part is we're going to connect the RX and the TX lines together. Uh, it's what's called a loopback test. Uh, and that's fairly easy. They're actually right on top here. Uh, if you take this top area and you just connect your wire uh, from the two pins that are closest to the power plug. One is RX and the other is TX. Uh, and so that's just a little loopback. And so now you'll notice that uh, RC7 is on. That's because you're actually transmitting to yourself. And so if I press the button now, uh, they both get dim at the same time. Uh, so that's kind of it. Um, for a little demo, you can just kind of watch and see. I've got one of these little XB things. Uh, so I'm going to demo this real quick, just so you can kind of see that it works. Uh, they plug right on the top there. And so I'm going to open up uh, Secure CRT, and now whenever I hit this button, uh, it should transmit to me a bunch of zeros. Uh, so you can see that that actually works. Um, and if I wanted to, I could, of course, change the value. I don't know. Let's say I wanted to print uh, sevens instead. Uh, I can change it to the number seven. And then whenever I start receiving these things, uh, I will receive a flood of sevens now. So there I've got my flood of sevens. And actually, it doesn't have to stop with the number 7. One other thing you could do is if you wanted to, instead of sending a single byte, um, ASCII communication is easy. And you could actually just like printf something, right? So if we wanted to, we could printf uh, hello world, right? I'll even add a backslash n so it prints pretty on my console. This part you can just watch if you want. There's no reason for you to do this because it would just make the light dim, and that's all you would see anyway. So now when I press this button, it says hello world repeatedly, right? So if you're doing straight string communication, uh, there's a lot of easy ways to do things. I'm actually going to comment this out because what we're going to do in the lab and the next video lecture is sending a single byte, uh, which we use this, this style right here. All right, that's it for this time. Next time we'll do uh, receiving, which is a little bit harder. See you then.